Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to cover deductive structure, the first lesson, and then we're also going to cover uh, the lecture on statements of logic. So let's start first with deductive structure. Okay, well, what is deductive structure? Deductive structure in geometry, in particular, is just a way of stating a conclusion based on facts or theorems or definitions or previously proven statements. So in a paragraph proof in deductive structure or in a two column proof, when you create those proofs, first you start by the givens and the facts, the definitions, the theorems and the postulates, and then you come to a conclusion based on those previously proven statements. Right. Well, there are some parts to the dedu deductive structure. First is undefined terms. And undefined terms are just terms which are not determined by previously defined concepts. So those are concepts of which you might need to define as you go through your proof. Postulates are unproven assumptions. All right. So for a postulate, <clears throat> you make an assumption. It appears to be true, uh, but they're not proven. Now, postulates are not necessarily reversible as statements of logic. So let's talk about uh, what a postulate might look like. So I created the monkey postulate. And the monkey postulate says that monkeys, all monkeys are hairy animals. Now if this were reversible, then I could say that all hairy animals are monkeys. But we know that that's not true. We've got uh, tigers are monkey, some, uh, sorry, tigers are hairy, some humans are hairy. So just because you have a hairy animal it doesn't necessarily mean it's a monkey. So postulates are assumptions, unproven assumptions, that appear true. However, they're not necessarily reversible. They could be reversible. All right, definitions are uh, statements uh, based on the meaning of a term. So definition of a monkey, for example, which I'll explain in just a second, would be reversible as a statement of logic. So what is the definition of a monkey? A definition of a monkey is a small to medium sized primate that typically has a long tail. So definitions are always reversible. So that means that all small to medium sized primates that typically have a tail are monkeys. And then finally we have theorems. Theorems are mathematical statements that can be proven. However, these statements cannot are not necessarily reversible. So again, just like the postulates, they may be reversible but they're not necessarily reversible as statements of logic. So what's an example of a theorem? Uh, okay, well, we have the congruence in geometry. We have the congruence of complementary angles, and that says if angles are complementary to congruent angles, or to a congruent angle, then they are congruent themselves. So here we have the example of here we have the example of uh, two angles B and C which are complemented, they're congruent and they're actually, I'm sorry, they're complementary to angle A. So if angles are complementary to a congruent angle or an angle then they are congruent. So I know that uh, B plus A is equal to 90 degrees and the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to 90 degrees. So I know that if they're complementary to the same angle then they are also uh, congruent. So I know B and C are congruent themselves. Now this doesn't mean that if angles are congruent then they are complementary uh, to a given angle or to congruent angles. So I will take my eraser and I will change A. And we'll make this 120 degrees. Now I have two angles, B and C which are both congruent by definition in the reversible statement. So angle B and angle C are congruent. So I say angle B is congruent to angle C. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're complementary to A. Okay, you can see just by taking a look at this, since A is already 120 degrees, B and C cannot be complementary to A because by definition these two angles, <coughs> A and C and A and B, um, if they are complementary angles, would add up to 90 degrees. All right. So we talked about deductive structure, just a structure in which you uh, formulate a conclusion based on previously proven statements. There are parts of deductive structure. 
uh, undefined terms, postulates, definitions, and theorems. Now let's talk about statements of logic. Statements of logic, uh, there are four different statements of logic. First is a conditional statement. Conditional statement says, if P happens, then Q happens. So P is considered <clears throat> the hypothesis, and Q is the conclusion. So a conditional statement might say, if I wake up by 7 o'clock in the morning, then I will be at work on time. So P, if I wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> and Q is a conclusion, I will be at work on time. So that's a conditional statement. If P, then Q. The converse of the conditional statement is the reversible part of it. So converse of the conditional statement, <clears throat> if I wake up at 7 o'clock, then I will get to work on time, would be if I get to work on time, then I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning. So that's your conditional statement. All right, so let's move on to statements of logic because it flows naturally from this lesson on deductive structure. And we're going to continue. So I have a conditional statement, the converse of the conditional statement. Uh, then before I get into that, let's talk about negation. Okay, so negation is just the negation of a statement P would be not P. So if I said, for example, in my prior example, if I woke up at, uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning, not P would be, I didn't wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Or if the statement, conditional statement, or the hypothesis is, if I am a teacher, then not P would be, I am not a teacher. Okay, so <clears throat> let's, let's go with, instead of the prior example of if I wake up in the morning at 7 o'clock, then I will get to work on time. Let's change that to, if I am a teacher, then I am smart. So the hypothesis is, or the P is, I am a teacher, and the conclusion is, I am smart. So if P, then Q. If I am a teacher, then I am smart. The converse of that says, right, we switch that around. If I am smart, then I am a teacher. Okay, now there are two other parts of statements of logic. The second is the inverse. And the inverse is, if not P, then not Q. So if I am not a teacher, then I am not smart. And finally, the contrapositive, which says, if not Q, right, so that's the conclusion, then not P, the hypothesis. So if I am not smart, then I am not a teacher. Well, <clears throat> it just so happens that if the original conditional statement is true, if it's true that if I am a teacher, then I am smart, then the contrapositive of that must be true. So if I am not smart, then I am not a teacher. So let's think about that. If the original conditional statement is true, if I am a teacher, then I must be smart. Well, then if I'm not smart, then I can't be a teacher. So again, if the conditional statement is true always, then the contrapositive of that statement will always be true. All right. So let's talk finally about chain of reasoning. Chain of reasoning just links different conditional statements together. So uh, if you had if P then Q, so P was the hypothesis, Q was the conclusion. Now Q becomes a hypothesis and R becomes a conclusion. And then R becomes a hypothesis and A becomes a conclusion. And then we can say if P then A. So we start with uh, one conditional statement and we link those conditional statements together so that we can make an overall statement that's chained together. So let's take an example. All right, the example is if you play Halo, that's the game on the Xbox, that violent video game, if you play Halo your brain will turn to mush. If your brain turns to mush, you will not do well in this class. If you don't do well in this class, then you will not move on to higher levels of math or algebra 2 trig. So, I can use chain of reasoning. My initial, my initial uh, hypothesis was if you play Halo. My conclusion is your brain will turn to mush. Then I change <clears throat> the hypothesis to if your brain turns to mush, then the conclusion is you will not do well in class. All right, then I change that conclusion to hypothesis. If you don't do well in class, then my final conclusion is you will not move on to algebra two trig. So I link all of those together and I can make a statement through a chain of reasoning that says, if you play Halo, then you will not move on to Algebra 2 trick. 